welcome. On behalf of the National Catholic Educational Association, thank you for joining us for this professional development opportunity. I am Christy, NCEA's facilitator for today's webinar, Retreats, Building Communion and Community Among the Faculty and Staff. A few quick housekeeping notes while our participants join. Today's session will be recorded for archival purposes. If you have any questions during the presentation, please use the Q&A window. And at the conclusion of today's session, a link to the online survey will be shared with instructions on how to receive a certificate of completion for this webinar. Today's webinar is the, presented by the one, the only, Dr. Daryl Hagen. Dr. Hagen has served the mission of Catholic education for 40 years as a teacher, principal, superintendent, director, accreditation lead evaluator, and author. Today, Daryl serves as the director of the Institute for the Transformation of Catholic Education at the Catholic University of America. His published research and passion are about engaging Catholic school educators to promote and enhance authentic Catholic identity and school improvement. His first book, Communion and Community, 46 Ways to Engage Catholic School Faculty and Staff During the School Year, 2023, is now available. And Dr. Hagen, I'm going to say thank you so much for being with us today. I'm going to turn over the screen to you to start us off. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. And good morning. It's nice to be with everyone. And we're going to talk about retreats today. As Christy said, building communion and community among our faculty and staffs within our Catholic schools. So let's get started. And I would like to begin with just a prayer, if you would pray with me this morning. Uh, our prayer will be part of the official prayer for the Jubilee 2025. Uh, the doors open, I believe, on December the 24th. Pilgrims of Hope is the theme of this Jubilee. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of the Jubilee reawake, reawaken in us pilgrims of hope, a yearning for the treasures of heaven. May that same grace spread the joy and peace of our Redeemer throughout the earth. To you, our God, eternally blessed, be glory and praise forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And speaking of joy and peace of our Redeemer, what better way to do that than in retreats? As Christy said, I am Daryl Hagen. I wanted to share just a little bit more about me. I, as you can see, I, I, I have a family. I have three wonderful grandchildren, Lily, Thomas, and John. I have grand dogs. Uh, I love soccer, as you can see. Uh, and I have a special Catholic school. So just a shout out to Holy Name of Jesus Catholic School in Henderson, Kentucky. It is where I was a student for all of my elementary years and middle school years. I was blessed to be a teacher there, principal there, and so Holy Name holds a special place in my heart. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, and so, as Christy said, I come to you from the Catholic University of America through the Institute where we're happy to serve our Catholic schools through spiritual, intellectual, cultural, and operational renewal and transformation of our schools. Part of the Institute and part of what CUA is doing is bringing Lumen accreditation to Catholic schools across the country. It is probably the most exciting, important, and innovative initiative in K-12 Catholic education happening today. So why retreats? Why, why would we want to take our faculty and staff on retreats? Well, let's look at the NASBEX 4.1. Faculty and staff are provided spiritual formational experiences that include personal reflection and interpersonal encounter. So just from the standards as the, we begin this discussion, there's a standard out there, a benchmark in terms of taking our faculty on retreat. Throughout history, we know that the faithful have disengaged from their daily responsibilities to reflect, to pray, and draw closer to God. And again, why retreats? Scheduling a retreat prior to the new academic year 
or during the school year, it may provide inspiration and even greater clarity toward the mission of Catholic schools and the role that you and I both play in the fulfillment of the mission. Today in this webinar, we're going to have four areas to consider when planning a retreat. And I think if you focus on these four, I think you're going to have a great retreat. It's mission awareness, team challenges, community building activities, and themes. So let's get started and look at mission awareness. So when we talk about the mission of Catholic schools, I think this statement is so powerful and really speaks to the mission. Let's look at this. Catholic schools do not have a mission. The mission has Catholic schools. Catholic schools do not have a mission. The mission has Catholic schools. And if you're like me, when you first heard this, you're like, wait a minute, we have a mission statement. Yes, we all have our mission statements. And the mission statements bring us to a understanding of clarity that our school is part of that mission. So the mission has Catholic schools and we have Catholic school statements to be reminded of that. Pretty powerful. When we talk about mission statement activities, what could you do during a retreat? What are some of the things that you might do to highlight that mission statement of your Catholic school that might be in a fun, interactive way, but really reminds the faculty, the staff of your core mission? You could do a fill in the blank. You could do a word search like the one on the screen. A blank piece of paper where you just put people into groups, small groups. See if they can write the mission statement. You could do signs and symbols. You could do something with service, do something with the word church, do something with the word school, and turn them into signs and symbols, and then put those symbols together in the order of your mission. You could even have them act out the mission statement to see if you can get people to guess all of the words. Here's a fill in the blank. This is the mission statement for our wonderful NCEA office. Do you know the answers to the missing blanks? Because this is what you could do for your own mission statement. Do you think you got them all? Did you guess gospel, stakeholders, data, faith, and intellectual? It's an interesting and fun way to, again, remind people of our mission statement without just saying, everyone, let's just read it out loud together. This kind of makes them think and, and understand what is the mission of your Catholic school. We do recommend that you annually review your mission statement. And I think during the retreat could be a wonderful opportunity to do that. But if you didn't want to do it in the retreat, you could also consider the opening faculty meeting. As you go to, I hope that you will at some point also um, revisit the, the words within your mission statement. And what a nice way to understand better verbiage, maybe, or different verbiage, is to look at other people's mission statements. Here's one from the Archdiocese of Vancouver. And one of the things that I really liked about this was partnership with home and parish. I also like citizens who will live, celebrate, and proclaim their faith. And what better way to understand your mission statement than to review other mission statements and see what you might want to borrow in terms of language in rewriting your own mission statement. So we talked about mission awareness, and now we're going to move to team challenges. Team challenge acti activities emphasize the importance of engagement among the faculty and staff and will bring great joy to the retreat. Trust me when I tell you, it will bring great joy. People like team challenges. I do this all over the United States and I haven't found a, a non-competitive group of faculty and staff anywhere. They like their engagement, they like their activities. Here's one, a scavenger hunt. 
All you do is organize into groups. You know how to do a scavenger hunt, but it can be done at the retreat facility. It could be done within your own school building or in areas near the retreat. And they, they look for objects that are already there or things that you play strategically. I put the golf cart there because I actually did in a golfing community, I did a scavenger hunt where I put all of our school principals into small groups of three and four. And because they were there was four seats in the, golf, in, the, in, in the golf carts we had, and they had to ride around the town and look for things. It was fun, 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 and really brought them together uh, as a cohesive group. Uh, if you have a, a golf cart community, you should consider that. So here are some examples. I've talked about the scavenger hunt. You could also do where you have them compete, putting puzzles together. If you do do, if you uh, choose the puzzle completion, you may want to withhold or mix up some of the pieces so that they all have to work together, not just within their groups. The great pumpkin. If your retreat happens to be in the fall, what a great way to let them all uh, have a challenge where they carve pumpkins and they turn them into jack-o'-lanterns and then they they give them a name and then they maybe they give them a a, um, a ministry that, that that maybe they'll work in and you can then move the pumpkins into your school put them as decorations and even have the students vote on which one they think is the great pumpkin the best pumpkin and have a little contest a challenge miniature golf and if you do miniature golf you're like that would be fun but make it a little bit more at each hole, maybe ask a question about the history of the school and see who can guess uh, the history of the school or ask questions about the mission statement, but have something at each hole in which they do in addition to showing off their great golf skills. For uh, anybody that is uh, up in age, you may remember the game show Minute to Win It. It was full of fun activities using everyday objects, you can always Google Minute to Win It Games and you will see a whole host of things for you to choose from. So we've talked about the importance of mission awareness and I've given you some team challenges to think about. But the third is community building activities. And community building activities are not team challenges. So don't be thinking that they're gonna be competing. Community building is an opportunity to get to know each other better. During the retreat, include time for participants to share with each other. And so what do I mean by that? I think having people talk about their middle names. What is your middle name? Where did it come from? I think there's a lot of rich stories about people's middle names, and it might be my great-great-grandfather's name. And I've shared this name with everybody, my dad has it, my granddad had it, my great granddad had it, my son's going to have it. People will share amazing stories. It also can be as funny as, well, they couldn't think of anything. And so there was a character on a TV show and mom said, we're going to use that. But that's still a great story, isn't it? So maybe have everyone share at the retreat, what is their middle names? Better yet. At the retreat, on, on name tags, instead of putting people's first names that everybody knows, put their middle names on their name tag. Have people sit and discuss what's their favorite, favorite seasons, favorite ice cream, favorite color. Because generally when you ask people, what is my favorite season? They will then tell something more about that, about the why. I like fall because, and, and typically I don't even ask them to do that. I just ask them to share their favorite season and the rest of it just comes naturally. I think during a retreat, asking people about their most memorable teacher or coach, followed up by the why. Why was the teacher so memorable? Why do you remember them so fondly? What is it that they did or didn't do? because that will get to the core of sometimes connecting to the mission of your Catholic school. You can ask them to finish the sentence, I appreciated when. And if you really wanna be specific, I, you have them 
say this about someone on the faculty that's currently there. I appreciated when Mrs. Smith took over my morning duty the day that uh, that my dog was really sick and I had to take him to the vet. It really meant a lot to me that she blah, blah, blah. And I think you can really get some team community um, core mission when people are expressing their appreciation for each other. The gospel retreat passage reflections for the day. Your retreat will certainly be built around a gospel reading, a retreat passage, something from our gospel, the gospel that sustains us. And so while you will certainly, you know, want to read it, you will want to include it as part of maybe the liturgy, but you also need to have them time for them to share, to build that community with each other and share those reflections. <clears throat> and faith journey. We all are on a journey. And it, what a powerful statement it would be if someone was willing and comfortable to share their own faith journey with each other. So we've done mission awareness, team challenges, and community building activities. You can see we're already layering exactly what you need to do in order to have a successful Catholic retreat. And I think it all can be wrapped up, if you will, with a theme. We know that themes are very powerful and it gives you a focal point. Schools have themes. The diocese sometimes has themes. Sometimes the diocesan school office has a theme for all, all their schools. You can have a specific retreat theme. Even Vatican has themes like the Jubilee, Pilgrims of Hope, where we started our morning prayer. The USCCB has themes. I know during Advent and Lent, they always have a theme. You can use their theme. You could you find a theme from the readings of the day as well. And NCEA has themes. And he, so you can see there are no, there's no, there's an endless number of themes out there. NCEA is united in faith and community. CUA has a new theme. Lead with light, the one in the bottom right-hand corner. Shine your light. That's our new theme for CUA. You can see one diocese where I was superintendent, we had the theme, you belong here. It could be Christ the teacher, made for greatness. And again, you don't have to come up with these. You can Google them and you can find all kinds of themes out there. And then you can choose the best one that fits your school. Final considerations for retreats as you are building a successful Catholic school retreat. Make sure there is time for discernment and reflection. When we discern, we ask, what is God calling us to do here at this school at this moment? And in order to do that, we need time to discern. We need time to reflect. We need time to be quiet so that we can hear what God is calling us to do. I think you can also, after doing it individually, I think pairs, walk two and two, go for a walk with somebody on your staff, talk about what God's calling the school to do this year. How can we participate in that calling? And then small and large groups, depending on the size of your retreat. Location, location matters. It really does matter. Make sure it's connected to the theme. If you can connect your location to the theme, it just raises the retreat to a whole new level. Make sure there's indoor and outdoor space because you will want to do some things indoors, but to get people out in an outdoor space would just be that more meaningful. Make sure it's comfortable. Make sure the location is comfortable for all those participants. When we talk about the specific needs of the individual, make sure you know who's coming and any specific needs that they have, like steps, like are there actual steps that people have to climb? And if so, how many? And is that comfortable for everybody? You wouldn't want to have a certain percentage of your participants 
not feel comfortable, <laughs> excuse me, in the retreat because of the physical barriers. I'm going to get a drink real quick. Thank you. <clears throat> Dietary. I also think food matters, right? You want to make sure that if someone's gluten, uh, has a gluten issue, that you are taking care of them. Or uh, if they're allergic to nuts or eggs, please be aware of people's dietary. And just to make sure you have really good snacks, drinks, desserts. People like to eat. So pulling this all together, it is important for all faculty and staff to be involved in initial and permanent formation. And the annual retreat is one way to start building communion and community while furthering their formation. And so when you talk about taking people on retreat, this could be part of the initial or the permanent. One of the things that we really need to understand as Catholic schools is this initial and permanent formation of our teachers and staff. This is not a one-time thing and then you're done. We need to consistently, annually bring formation to our teachers. Here are some resources for the retreats. As Christy mentioned, she was kind enough to mention my book, 46 Ways to Engage Your Faculty and Staff. It is a great way for you to be able to have very specific ideas. So I encourage you to consider that. Oops, sorry, let me go back. Uh, prayer and discernment resources. Here on the USCCB website, you can see these. Uh, I also wanted to show you, there are free resources out there that are available to you. The Diocese of Cleveland has a retreat called by spirit. It's It's got everything that you need to consider right here. And, and, and kudos to the Catholic Diocese of Cleveland for that. I've already showed you the USCCB resources, but and here is uh, the Alliance uh, for Catholic Education. They have one retreat called to servant leadership. For some reason, the computer is getting ahead of, of itself. There's the Notre Dame one. There's also the NCEA blog. I have put a blog on there, but there are so many things out there in the blog for you. But here is an, a blog about building the retreat that we've talked about, but please know there are so many great articles in the NCEA blog or NCEA talk, a Catholic school education blog. And if you want to know more about communion and community, I also have a podcast at Tad Dickel's Leadership and Strategy, where I delve into why is it important to build communion and community? And finally, in closing, as we began in prayer, we close in prayer. And you will, you will certainly do that during your retreat. Know that the staff at the Institute for the Transformation of Catholic Education is praying for you and your schools. And we also seek your prayers as we continue to expand our programs across the country to others. I hope that as you build your next retreat, that you can use something, whether it's being more aware of the mission, adding a team challenge, adding community building activities, really great theme. I hope that this was beneficial to you in one way or another, and just know how grateful I am for the mission that you serve each and every day. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to Christy. Dr. Hagen, thank you so very much for sharing these rich resources um, to, to lead our schools in personal reflection and encounter across the country. It's exciting and, and necessary for us. Um, you must have led a great many yourself. <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> I did, I'm sure they would be wonderful um, and, and inspirational, innovative, the, the creative ways that you did it. Um, and, and keeping the mission awareness front and center um, with the team challenges, to level up the fun and yet the community building activities, mm -hmm. not 
challenges um, to share gratitude and listen wrapped up in a theme. It's it's the perfect recipe for a retreat. Yeah. So thank I like you. That, Christy, I like I like the idea of a recipe because that's exactly right. These are the ingredients that you need to have a successful Catholic school retreat. Well said. Oh, well, thank you for, for the inspiration. And um, and also, thank you for supporting the accreditation of our schools. You're welcome. And, and leading the, the Pilgrims of Hope, as it were. Dr. Hagen, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your time and your talents. Absolutely. Thank you. Grateful. And to our participants, thank you for attending this NCEA webinar series. We strive to continuously improve the quality of our member services based on your feedback. So there will be a link coming in the chat. Please use that to complete a very brief survey. Upon completion, you will be sent a certificate via automated email. So check your spam folder if you do not see an email within a few minutes. And on behalf of NCEA, Thank you for this opportunity to serve you. And we'll wrap it up here today with a goodbye and God bless you. God bless you.